You may be seated. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles, and let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us. Let us fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith, who, for the joy that was set before him, endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Dear friends, we are gathered here in the sight of God and in the face of these witnesses to join this man and this woman in holy matrimony, which is an honorable estate instituted by our wonderful Creator. Jesus himself sanctioned marriage by his presence and first miracle in Cana of Galilee. And Paul commended marriage to be honorable among all men. And therefore, it is not to be entered into lightly or unadvisedly, but reverently, discreetly, advisedly, soberly, and in the fear of God. And it's into this holy estate that these two people come now to be joined. Dave, my dear friend, will you have this woman to be your wedded wife, to live with her after God's commandments in the holy estate of marriage? And will you love Pamela, honor and cherish her so long as you both shall live, will you? I will. <laughs> and Pamela, my dear friend, will you have this man to be your wedded husband, to live with him after God's commandments in the holy estate of marriage, and will you love him, cherish and submit to him, so long as you both shall live, will you? I will. Amen. And now let us all continue in worship by singing the two hymns printed on the back of your program, Joy to the World and Hark the Herald Angels Sing.
Friends, please remain standing for our scripture readings. Our first scripture reading is from the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 4, verses 7 through 12. Remember, these are the very written words of God Almighty. Again, I saw vanity under the sun. One person who has no other, either son or brother. Yet there is no end to all his toil, and his eyes are never satisfied with riches, so that he never asks, For whom am I toiling and depriving myself of pleasure? This also is vanity and an unhappy business. Two are better than one, because they have a good reward for their toil. For if they fall, one will lift up his fellow. But woe to him who is alone when he falls and has not another to lift him up. Again, if two lie together, they keep warm. But how can one keep warm alone? And though a man might prevail against one who is alone, two will withstand him. A threefold cord is not quickly broken. Our second scripture reading is from Ephesians chapter 5, verses 21 through 33. Submit to one another out of reverence for Christ. Wives, submit to your husbands as to the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, as Christ is the head of the church, his body, of which he is the Savior. Now as the church submits to Christ, so also wives should submit to their husbands in everything. Husbands, love your wives, just as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her, to make her holy, cleansing her by the washing with water through the word, and to present her to himself as a radiant church without stain or wrinkle, or any other blemish, but holy and blameless. In this same way, husbands ought to love their wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself. After all, no one ever hated his own body, but he feeds and cares for it, just as Christ does the church. For we are members of his body. For this reason, a man will leave his father and his mother and be united to his wife, and the two will become one flesh. Now this mystery is profound. But I am talking about Christ and the church. However, each one of you must also love his wife as he loves himself, and the wife must respect her husband. You may be seated. Well, Dave and Pamela, it is such an honor and privilege and joy for me to be officiating your marriage today. You are my friends, and I love both of you very much. It has been a privilege to watch God and his providence bring you together, and we all wish and pray for the happiest of marriages. But for the next few minutes, I'd like to, I'd like to briefly talk about what today is all about. Because the meaning of marriage is no longer something that can be taken for granted. In fact, the meaning of marriage, the definition of marriage, is changing at a very rapid pace. Take, for example, wedding vows. Wedding vows serve as the foundation or the specific terms of the covenant ceremony. And just yesterday, just yesterday, I read an article entitled, Why You Really Should write your own marriage vows. Now, important disclaimer, very important. There is nothing inherently wrong with a couple writing their own vows. It can be a wonderful and meaningful thing as long as those vows don't redefine marriage. Unfortunately, that's what's happening more and more. I'll quote from the article that I read yesterday why you really should write your own vows. The premise of the article is this. What you vow in marriage is up to you. Quote, your love and your relationship are one of a kind and your vows should be too. When you read your vows, you're reading what you are uniquely promising to your partner, something that no one else can decide for you. And so in the mind of this author, and I think in the minds of many today, what you vow 
is completely and totally up to you. And so therefore, you define what marriage means. And you decide what kind of commitment you're willing or not willing to make. But Dave and Pamela, I'm here to remind you today, and to all of us, that marriage is not what we define it to be. In fact, your vows are not based on what you would or wouldn't like to commit to. Your vows are rooted in and defined by the passage of Scripture I just read from Ephesians chapter 5 that says, A man shall leave his father and mother and hold fast to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. Like, that's the essence of marriage. And then Paul describes the ground of it. This mystery is profound, and I am saying that it refers to Christ and the church. And so marriage between a man and a woman is just a picture. It is a shadow of the marriage between Christ and his church. It is that marriage with a capital M that informs this marriage. It's that covenant that serves as the precedent and context of this one. It's the commitment that Jesus made to love his bride, the church, that provides the foundation and the basis for what we're doing today. And so, Dave and Pamela, you're not taking and making the biblical vows today just because that's what people do, just because you're sentimental and old-fashioned. That's not why you're taking and making the vows that you are. You are taking and making the biblical vows because marriage is a gift of God, created by God, defined by God, and it points to something so much greater than itself. It points to the marriage between Jesus and his church. And so your commitment to make and fulfill your vows to one another flows from the fact that Jesus not only made vows to love his church, the Lord Jesus Christ kept all his vows to love his church. He lived the life that we could never live, and he died the death that we should have died. And that is the gospel of Jesus Christ, that Jesus loved his bride so much that he literally gave his life for her. Indeed, in one sense, all of human history is played out to the backdrop of the tune, Here Comes the Bride, where every hour of every day, God is wooing and drawing a people to himself. And on the last day of history, the proverbial doors of human history are going to be thrust open and God the Father will present to his precious son a beautiful and radiant bride. It is that day that informs this one. And so, Dave... The Apostle Paul wrote that Christ lived and died so that he might present the church to himself without spot or wrinkle or any such thing, and that in the same way husbands, they should love their wives as their own bodies. And Dave, that means you're to love Pamela selflessly, tirelessly, and sacrificially. In God's economy, Pamela is your first responsibility, which means that to some degree... The Lord will hold you responsible for her spiritual well-being. That is a sobering thing and a significant thing. And my brother, I charge you to take that responsibility very seriously, to love this beautiful woman and care for her like Jesus cares for his church. And Pamela, today you're vowing to be a loving and faithful wife as long as you shall live. And loving Dave and remaining faithful to Dave, among other things, means that you're to point this man all the days of his life to the person and work of Jesus. It means you're to put Dave's needs above his own and encourage him and help him live a life of faith and repentance in the gospel of Jesus. 
I charge you, my dear sister, to love David Cleland like Christ loves the church. And may God enable the two of you to fulfill your vows in light of the fact that Jesus made and kept vows to his church. Amen and amen. And now you two, please turn and face one another in your bouquet to faith. Hold hands and face one another. Dave, please repeat after me. I, Dave, take you, Pamela. I, Dave, take you, Pamela. To be my wedded wife. To be my wedded wife. And I do promise and covenant. And I do promise and covenant. Before God and these witnesses. Before God and these witnesses. To be your loving and faithful husband. To be your loving and faithful husband. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. In plenty and in want. In plenty and in want. In joy and in sorrow. In joy and in sorrow. As long as we both shall live. As long as we both shall live. And Pamela, please repeat after me. I, Pamela, take you, Dave. I, Pamela, take you, Dave. To be my wedded husband. To be my wedded husband. And I do promise and covenant. And I do promise and covenant. Before God and these witnesses. Before God and these witnesses. To be your loving and faithful wife. In sickness and in health, in plenty and in want, in joy and in sorrow, as long as we both shall live. Dave, please take this ring and place it on Pamela's finger and repeat after me. This ring I give you. This ring I give you. As a symbol and pledge. As a symbol and pledge. Of constant faith and abiding love. Of constant faith and abiding love. Pamela, please place that ring on Dave's finger. Repeat after me. This ring I give you. This ring I give you. As a symbol and pledge. Of constant faith and abiding love. Speak with the tongues of men and of angels, but have not love. I am a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. And if I have prophetic powers and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have all faith so as to move mountains, but have not love, I am nothing. Though I may give all I possess and striving so my love profess but not be given my love within the prophet soon Turn strangely thin. Love is patient and kind. Love does not envy or boast. It is not arrogant or rude. 
It doesn't insist on its own way. It does not rejoice at undoing, but rejoices with the truth. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Come, Spirit, come. Our hearts control. Our spirits long to be made whole. Let inward love guide every deed. By this we worship and are free. Now faith, hope, and love, these three abide. But the greatest of these is love. By this we worship and are free. Friends, pray with me. Our Father in heaven, we do thank you. We praise you for the gift of marriage and the beautiful and wonderful picture of the gospel that it is. Father, we thank you for giving this gift to Dave and Pamela. And we pray that by your spirit and through your grace and mercy, that you would enable them to fulfill the vows that they just made. Father, we ask that you would make these two people one with Christ Jesus at the center and grant to them a marriage that will bring honor and glory to your name all the days of their lives. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. And now, by the authority committed to me as a minister of the Church of Jesus Christ, according to to the ordinance of God and the laws of the state of Texas, I declare that Dave and Pamela are now husband and wife in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Dave, you may kiss your bride. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you. May the Lord lift up the light of his countenance on you all the days of your life and give you peace. Friends, well, it is now my great honor and privilege to introduce to all of you for the very first time Reverend and Mrs. David Harry Cleland.
was filled with joy. Now off into the sunset bright, the lucky girl and boy. Oh, wedding bells, wedding bells, they have rung today. As we tell the newlyweds and send them on their way. Wedding bells, wedding bells, now the two are one. They and Pamela are when the new life has begun. All right, Dave and Pam, we are so happy for you guys. We love you so much. This was a beautiful wedding. And we just are so grateful that you're part of our Providence family. We're praying for you and thinking about you and hope you have a wonderful first Christmas together. We love you. Great. Hi, people and Dave, congratulations. Thanks so much for including our church today in your celebration. Yeah, so it was so fun seeing you guys. This was great getting to know y'all. Congratulations and uh, hope you have a great honeymoon. Dave and Pamela, congratulations. We're so excited for you. Uh, we'll be praying for you. Pray the Lord's blessing on your marriage. It's a happy day. Congratulations. Congratulations, Dave and Pamela. We love you very much. Felicidades, Pamela. Dios bendiga. Congratulations, you two. Your wedding was absolutely beautiful. You're a beautiful couple, and we're excited to watch as you start a new journey together and your life together in Christ. Let your light shine. Together in the future.